Hello Noble Ones, welcome back to my channel. This is the Metatron speaking. Today we're going to talk about the Samurai. History. Origin. War. Well, since we are discussing Samurai history and Samurai combat, how about doing it in full Samurai armor? Just because... Samurai history is a huge topic, and as any massive topic, it is full of misconception, but also I believe that the main problem sometimes is the approach we have to such big topics. For instance, you noble ones are now familiar with my studio, which is where I receive friends, but it is also where I receive uh, clients, because it is situated in my home. It is one of the rooms in my home. My studio reflects my hobbies and my passion and ultimately my recent, a sort of recent career as a YouTuber. It is indeed a testimony of the great passion that I have for both ancient history and ancient historical warfare. So much so that sometimes I even forget that my biological imperative requires a minimum amount of dormancy per day in order to properly function. However, when friends, relatives and clients alike come to my studio, they often come up with questions because they see a Roman legionary set and they ask me questions about the legionaries, they ask me questions about medieval knights and of course questions about the samurai. The problem with such questions is that unfortunately when they ask you something about the Roman legionary, I have to ask a date. Because as I have stated many times in my videos, the equipment, armors, weapons, style of combat, everything about the Roman legionary will change depending on whether we're talking about the Kingdom of Rome, we're talking the Republican time, we're talking Imperial time, post-Imperial time. Well, the same concept applies to Samurai history, to the very concept of the Samurai. Before we can give actual real information about the Samurai, we need to specify what era we are talking about. Japanese history goes back thousands of years. The Japanese islands were inhabited by farmers, fishermen and gatherers. However, when we study Japanese ancient history, then warfare will be almost entirely a constant. It will be a tale of warring clans, led by chiefs struggling for land. You see, only 20% of Japanese land is fit for farming. What this meant is that all Japanese clans had to quickly come up with new ideas to become more effective in warfare, and new weapons, armors, and fighting techniques were constantly developed. When we talk about the rise of the samurai, we're really talking about the 9th to the 12th century specifically. In the 7th century already, we have the development of the sort of armor that will become the samurai lamella armor. And mind you, this is not amula armor, this is already plate armor, because this is a 16th century suit of armor. This is a tose gusoku, which is modern armor, if you compare it to the early examples of yoroi, which was mostly lamella armor made of either metal, mostly iron, or leather. Now, I will dedicate a specific video to the development of Japanese samurai armor, but suffice to say that in the 7th century we have the beginning of the development of such armor and between the 7th to the 9th century we have the development and the birth of what will be called the class of the bushi, the class of the samurai. The 5th century is very important because we have the introduction of the horse to the Japanese isles. So, the introduction of the horse paved the way to samurai combat and samurai warfare. Special mounted units started to appear and they were indeed the first and early examples of samurai. So, in early warfare the samurai were mounted forces and they were mostly using bows and arrows as the primary weapon and the sword as a secondary weapon. This is quite clear when we start talking about Bushido, for example. Now, Bushido, of course, is a, an invention, the philosophy and the code that the samurai, or at least most samurai, will follow, uh, will be developed in the Muromachi period. So we're talking about 1336 to 1573. But its early examples were not called Bushido, but they were called Kyuba no Michi, which means the way of the horse and the bow. In the 13th century, as the Japanese start facing the menace of the Mongolian invasions, they will start changing again their way to approach battlefield warfare. They will indeed start preferring pole arms such as Yari and Naginata together with their bows and arrows, and the sword will become the least important of their weapons, only used for close quarter combat situations or 
as a testimony of their status during peace times. Ultimately, we have the introduction of the Tanegashima Teppo, the matchlock type arquebus. This one here. Now, this will completely change warfare in Japan. The Japanese will like them. They will first buy them, then copy them and mass produce them from original Portuguese examples. And Japanese shogun will issue these to both the samurai and the ashigaru. Another important difference for this time is that samurai will slowly change from mounted forces only to foot soldiers. So, early period, cavalry unit armed with bows and arrows and swords. Middle period, we could say mounted forces using pole arms and bows. Late period, foot soldiers using mostly gunpowder as a main weapon. Pole arms as a secondary weapon and then the katana. Alright, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron. And remember, the Metatron has spread its wings. Sayonara.